rebuilding, a catastrophic failure, a new start, physically, mentally, our careers, our businesses, step back, first step, next step, the driver in me just wants to get it done tomorrow, we'll do this, do that, let's move this, where are we at with this, you build some confidence, build some self-esteem, start to feel better about yourself. The Silverback Blueprint Podcast, a show for men over 40. We focus on getting stronger, staying motivated, building discipline, creating a community, and becoming truly happy. Hey guys, and welcome to episode 110 of the Silverback Blueprint Podcast, Workout Every Day. Obviously, that's the, the field I'm in is health and fitness, and my personal struggles with my own health and fitness um, come very much to bear on the subject I want to talk about today. And, you know, sometimes it sounds like it's a broken record, especially for the uninitiated and people that aren't there yet, people that, um, you know, have a lot of things they want to change in their life and in their health and what's happening with them. You know, you talk to any of us that are in, in this type of field, the first thing we're going to say is work out every day. And for a lot of people, it becomes annoying. And for some of us, it's something we have to remember for ourselves as well, because we can get really busy. A lot of things coming at us, especially if we're, you know, leading a busy lifestyle, building a business, dealing with people, family, kids, neighbors, political situations, whatever is coming at us. It can get pretty noisy and pretty busy, and the day can burn up pretty quick. And you can go a day, two days, a week, a month without working out, even in this, this field, owning a gym, there's been many days where I haven't worked out. You know, we've talked about that before for some of my own personal things and, and what I'm working on. And, you know, the biggest thing I want to get out there about working out is what it does, not just for our bodies, but really what it does for the mind, what it does for our routine, what it does for setting up our mindset. You know, the biochemical endorphin release alone, it should be enough for people to work out, right? That, um, that sense of euphoria that happens that our body is washed over with when we finish an arduous workout and we've pushed hard and we've released adrenaline and we've been breathing and the blood's flowing and the body's tingling, right? That itself should be enough to keep us going, but it's not. It's not for a few reasons. I think it's because it takes a little bit of work to get to that point. But I also think that we're in a society and a time in our, in our, uh, in our evolutionary process where there's many other things we can do that give us a similar feeling instantly, whether it's getting a hit of cocaine or heroin, that's going to hit you up like that, or a sugar rush from food. That's why a lot of people overeat or binge watching, you know, Netflix, because we get that kind of thing. We get that immediate, you know, release uh, of endorphins and euphoria. But unfortunately, those areas that do that for us are quicker, easier, but far from beneficial. Sex, stress, drama. I feel, I don't feel good about myself. So, you know what? I'm going to pick a fight with someone. So I feel a little bit better and I win an argument. And, you know, we've seen a lot of that in different, you know, phases around us and people around us in different relationships. Maybe we've even been in those situations. You know, I love a good argument because of the makeup sex. I'm like, well, how about a disagreement once in a while and just have good sex? Right? But you get caught in patterns. You know, at the end of the day, the the physical power we get from training and the building of the lean muscle tissue and the, you know, increase in aerobic capacity and all the jargon stuff that's out there and all the scientific reasons for doing it, it's all wonderful. And it's true. But it's not enough. Because if it was enough... Everybody would be fucking working out. Gyms would be packed all the time. Netflix would not survive. But it's not enough. Because we're not looking at it for the right reasons or for enough reasons overall. You know, one of the best things about a great workout is the cleansing of the mind. You know, we tell our clients all the time that when they're coming down and I could tell on their face they've had a rough day. And a stressful day. Or they're not comfortable because this is a new thing they're going back to or the new ritual they're adding. Or it's just, you know, when we start something new, it's hard because it's hard, right? It's hard because it's a new schedule. It's hard because we have to juggle things. It's hard because physically it's fucking hard to do when we first start working out. 
or we don't feel like it because our head's busy because we had a shit day at work or things are going off the rails at home, right? Or you just saw your bank's fucking, you know, accounts, you know, in the minus again. It's easy to become preoccupied with that. And what I tell people all the time is that, you know, you come down the stairs, let's just get the warm up in, let's get a great workout in. And I guarantee you, you're going to feel a lot better. The problems you had as you walked in from the stair, you know, down the stairs, since we're in the basement, so you come down the stairs. But the problems that were on your mind, the things that are bugging you, don't go away within that hour. They don't magically disappear. But you know what does change is our perspective. Because we've gotten some of that stress out from on the workout, we, we were able to purge some of that built up energy and frustration because of the endorphin release, the chemical release that our body is washing over us with, our brain is washing over us, our body with, because we had that physical stress and we were breathing in the adrenaline. I guarantee you, whatever was bugging you will just look different at the end of that workout. A lot of solutions come when we're clearing our head and we're focused and we're purging some of the stress and the anxiety. All of a sudden we can start to clear, see things more clearly. Something that was there becomes more apparent because we're able to see it. We got rid of some of the haze and the noise and, and the shit in front of us. We cleared a lot of that out of the way and we can see an answer or we just feel better because what was bugging us has worked us up into a state that we don't feel good. So it's only natural that we want to find ways to mediate that, to medicate that. There's a place for some TV. There's a place for music. There's a place for sex. There's a place for food. There's a place, even a place for booze. But when it becomes how you medicate and how you deal with what's bugging you, when it becomes how you hide or shield yourself from what's happening, it's no longer healthy. When it becomes all you can think about because it's the one thing that makes you feel good, it's no longer good. And we see that sometimes in training. People that, you know, work out way too much, they're addicted to it. But it's not as, it's, it's pretty fucking rare. But it does happen. Like anything, we can overdo it. Too much of a good thing becomes a bad thing. But not enough of a good thing becomes a very bad thing. Like our health, our energy, our focus. You know, once we do things like we have a great workout, or even a crappy workout. A crappy workout. I'll take a crappy workout over no workout. When we focus and strive on those things and we try to hold those standards that we hate, no matter what, we have to work out every day because it's important. It's important for our self-care. It's important for making us tougher. It's important for just the chemical reasons, the biological reasons alone. When we buy into that and we own that, it gives us permission to have fun. Once in a while, it gives us permission to have that cheesecake at the end of the meal. I had a hard day and a long day and I deserve to have these four glasses of wine after work. That's fucking bullshit. And you know it. But it feels good. And by the second glass, you start to feel a little bit better. But you know what? By the fourth glass, whatever was bugging you usually comes back with friends. Because now we're in a mental state where we're more susceptible, we're weaker. So a lot of times what was bugging us feels even worse or we feel worse about ourselves because like, oh, fuck, I'm drunk again. Oh, I shouldn't eat that whole, you know, two liters of ice cream or liters. I don't know what ice cream comes in. It's a container. I try not to eat the whole thing. That's how I do the math because it makes us feel good in the instance that we're doing it. But then there's a point later on where it comes back and bites us in the ass. I physically feel ill because I drank too much or I ate too much crap. Or I know I went back and I ate too much crap again to deal with it. Now I feel shitty about myself as well as feeling shitty physically from what I ate. So if we work out every day, the one of the things I try to get people when they're starting out to make the transformations in their lives is work out every day. Because once you work out every day, you feel better. And then your muscles start getting tired and you feel them during the day. You feel better. And what it does, it's a reminder of the changes you're making and you're working on. So when you're working out every day, you know what? You're going to start eating better every day because it's front of mind. You can, if you only try to behave twice a week, three times a week for 45 minutes, like most people do when they work out and it's surrounded by 23 hours and 15 minutes of garbage and debauchery and shit, well, what's going to win out? But then people will turn around and say, well, you know, I work out three times a week. It doesn't work because look at this. I go, no, 
you're behaving three times a week for 45 minutes to an hour. And when we look at the hard work you do, maybe it's maybe 25 to 30 minutes in the workout. That's the only positive thing you're doing to your body and your energy levels. For the whole week the rest of it you're sleeping terrible you're eating shit you're drinking too much you're in a high stress situation you're not taking care of yourself you're spending the majority of your time doing negative things nothing is going to be able to compensate for that in three hours a week if you're broke this working three hours a week gonna gonna solve that no if your house is a mess and everything's torn up outside inside out and stuff because you haven't cleaned in months is three hours going to solve that? No. So why would it be any different with our health and our fitness? At the end of the day, we have to spend more time overall being positive, living positive, doing positive things physically and mentally for ourselves. We need to live in that zone more often than not. You can have a cheat meal once a week. But most people, you know, forget how long a week is. You can have that cheat meal Friday night. Eat whatever you want. As long as the rest of the week you go back to eating properly and clean. Not kind of clean. Not kind of properly. I always tell people when they first start, you know, and they wonder why the scale's not moving. Because they get, you know, they develop what I call carb amnesia. They forget about all the carbs they're eating. Or they fall into that, well, it's, it's a healthy rice. It's a healthy carb. Well, it may be until you eat so many grams of it throughout the day that now it becomes unhealthy. Because it's more than what you need. You can eat all the whole wheat bagels in the world you want. The moment you start eating more than two, three, four hundred calorie grams of carbs a day, odds are you're going to get fat from it, no matter if that product itself was healthy, because of the amount of calories it has, the amount of carbs it has. It doesn't matter who you are and what you're doing. But we play those games with ourselves. Well, I, I eat those little bags of those those thin, you know, thin cracker things. Only have a hundred calories. Yeah, but you eat fucking nine of them, right? But we play games with ourselves. We fall into that. Marketing for these products is done that way. Oh, you know what? If you just eat this little yogurt, it's really healthy. Right. But then an hour later, you're munching on two chocolate bars. It's not healthy. We have to look at the big picture. If we want to be in a better position, we need to be healthier throughout the day. And working out for me, working out every day, is that impetus? Is that the word I'm looking for? I don't know. That's a good word. Maybe it means what I think it means. I don't know. But it's a great starting point. It's a great way to base your day around. If you at least have that going, you start with that, it'll build into other things overall. Because next thing you know, it becomes like, oh, I'd love to go out for you guys with wings tonight, but I have a workout. I have a class at six. Oh, come on. You don't need to work out every day and stuff like that. You know who says that? People who are fucking out of shape and unhealthy. Those are the only ones fucking telling you that. Because the ones that are in shape and healthy and are working hard on it, they'd be like, you know what? Good on you for doing that. Yeah, we'll meet up another time. Odds are that person is not sitting there telling you to come out for wings at the begin with. Well, I have these meetings and I have to, you know, I have to entertain people at work. I go, yeah, it doesn't mean you have to have three drinks at lunch. You can have a fucking salad and a coffee. You can have a salad and a glass of water. You can have a salad and a diet pop. Nobody dies. You're not losing the deal because you didn't get liquored up at noon. I know uh, as a business owner, if I'm dealing with someone and they got to get liquored up at noon, I don't know if I want to deal with that person. This isn't high school or, or university anymore where it's fun just to get liquored at two in the afternoon. I saw one guy, he was telling me about this. He said, oh, I have a hard time with meetings and stuff. So I said, hold meetings in restaurants where you have healthy choices. You can still buy them whatever they want. In fact, a lot of times for me now, when I'm having meetings, I try to eat uh, and I'm eating, you know, focus on my eating well, is we'll have them over at Farm Boy. So if you're listening to us from far, in Ottawa, there's a chain of these grocery stores, Farm Boy, and they have a, a deli section in the back where you can actually get ready-made meals. They're called trios. So you can get a chicken breast, you get some sweet, pota uh, some sweet potatoes, and... Uh, you know, a broccoli medley or a pepper medley, you know, a salad and stuff on the side. Dude, that's pretty clean eating. And they have tables where you can sit down and eat now. So you can have a meeting there. You can go to any restaurant. Almost every, any restaurant will make you a salad. Not enough chicken on it, order chicken on the side. They have water. They have soda water. It's about choices. It's about deciding what's really important overall. You know, the workouts ground us the workouts give us some structure and they also make us fitter they make us stronger they make us more capable physically which leads into the mental part as well 
working out every day. And again, it doesn't always have to be weights. It doesn't always have to be cardio. It doesn't always have to be about, you know, pushing yourself to pass out. That's bullshit too. And then sometimes people, oh, I don't want to work too hard. Oh, all right. That, that rarely is the case. But let's say that is the case, especially when we, when we deal with strength athletes and stuff. I'm like, you can walk on the treadmill on your days off, you know, and do a little bit of core. That's a workout. Getting outside, getting some fresh air for 20, 30 minutes. Walk, jog, run, whatever, whatever is easy for you to do on your days off in between. Steady state cardio, as we call it, on a scale of 1 to 10 exertion. 1 being you're just sitting around. 10 means you've passed out, right? I use walking at a 5, 6. As I get fitter, it becomes a 4, 5. When I first started, it was like a 7, 8 because I was tight and bigger and, and unhealthy. And when I was super fat and I first started all the stuff that led the hostile, a fucking walk for me was a 9. I would literally get out of the car and have to eyeball a park bench or a rock to sit on 100 feet away and get there. Because by the time I got there, my back was tight. I was breathing. I was out of shape. I was beat up. And I'd sit there and rest for as long as it took. And before I started, I had to find another target. Those were eight nines out of 10. That's how out of shape and heavy I was at the time. Now, my fitness level is much better than that. Even starting back when I go from powerlifting to conditioning, right? I don't start at that level. But there's some days where my back's tight from a workout and I'm walking, I have to stop a little more often and stretch. But you know what? That's okay. So for me, that's a five, six out of 10. If someone's super fit and lighter, that might be a 5K jog for them because exertion wise, that's a five, six out of 10 for them. For them, a nine might be running sprints up a hill for 40 minutes, right? That'd be like an 87 for me. But at the end of the day, you can work out every day. You need to work out every day, do different styles of workout every day, but get that blood flowing, create that ritual that mindset, that opportunity for you to release stress, to breathe, to get the blood flowing and take care of that physicality your body needs to be healthy and wants to have happen. Race horse has got to run. If a a horse can't run, race horse can't run, they're miserable. It's the same with us. We're still animals that were designed over, you know, however many years, depending what you want to believe on evolution or whatever it is, that we had to hunt and fight just to survive. That wasn't that long ago. It wasn't that long ago that we worked physically hard every day because we grew up on farms, right? It wasn't that long ago that we toiled in factories and mines. It wasn't that long ago that we walked to work. We lived in a small town. It wasn't that long ago we grew our own food and we had to split our own wood and we had to do all those things. So we were physical for so long, and it's only in the last little bit, especially in the last 25, 50 years, we've removed all the physicality, but the body hasn't had time to adapt to it. So now we have more time to eat, more time to fuck around, more time to spend doing nothing or or do things that aren't positive for us. That's what's killing us. We need to get back to working out. We need to feed the warrior. We need to feed that racehorse. We need to get out there and exercise. So we can fulfill the physicality that we need in our bodies and that will make our minds clearer and better and run better and have more energy and get rid of the stress when we have stress, have a place for it to be dissipated. Super important guys. If you're listening to this and you're just getting back into shape, don't get overwhelmed by it. Just fucking get out there and walk, do 10 push ups, 10 sit ups, 10 squats to the chair or couch or to a step. If you can't do 10, do five. Start somewhere. The body's an amazing adaptive machine. By doing that consistently in no time, what was hard to do for five will become 25. Our body can adapt to any environment. We just want to put a positive, strong environment out there so it adapts the way we want it to be. Because if we have a terrible environment, physically, mentally, nutritionally, our bodies are going to adapt to that too. But you know how it adapts? It adapts by getting softer, getting weaker, getting poisoned, getting diseased. It's all it's doing is adapting to the environment you put it under. So put it in a better environment. Start by working out every day, guys. That's all I got to say about that, guys. Head on over to iTunes. Leave us a five-star rating and a positive review. Head on over to HostileGear.com. Use the code word SILVERBACK to save 20% on some workout gear so you can work out every day. I don't care who you are. Even if you're power walking, you should have a powerlifting belt, some wrist straps, and at least four sweaters, hoodies. That might be a bit excessive, but, you know, we've got to pay them bills. Guys, thanks for listening. And as always, especially on today's episode about working out, work hard, motherfuckers. And I'll talk to you guys later.